Located seven degrees south of the equator, Diego Garcia is part of the British Indian Ocean Territory in the Chagos Archipelago. Known by many as the Navy's best kept secret because of its remote location, this coral atoll is actually home to about 3,000 residents at any given time. This is the American version of the Chagos. But these are the faces missing in the beautiful picture. They were once living a peaceful life on their paradise islands, until the unimaginable happened. They were removed and shipped off to live elsewhere. Forty years on, they still want to go back. The vision of the jet said that a government can govern, but don't have the right to remove people. The Chagos is almost unknown. It's an archipelago of 65 islands right in the middle of the Indian Ocean. The whole territory remains British. In the UK, however, few people have heard of the Chagos. To meet one of them, we have to travel deep into the British countryside and get to Hexham. This man is a retired Royal Air Force officer and is closely familiar with Diego Garcia, Chagos' main island. I was in, in the trade of motorboat crew and I was sent to Diego Garcia to take charge of the marine craft section there. And all the time the natives were walking to and fro past our huts, gave them a wave. Uh, they were very happy people and the whole atmosphere of the place was happy. They seemed to enjoy life on that island. They didn't use money, they didn't need it. However, the happy life came to an end in the 1960s and 70s. The 2,000 Chagosian people were evicted by the British government and forced to resettle in nearby Mauritius and the Seychelles. This was part of a secret deal between the United Kingdom and the United States to establish a military base on Diego Garcia, as revealed later by declassified official documents. Bill Rommel, a government minister, has commented on the issue. He says... The decisions taken by successive governments in the 1960s and 70s to depopulate the islands do not constitute the finest hour of UK foreign policy. In no sense am I seeking to justify the decisions. They may be seen as regrettable, but the government must deal with the current situation. Nevertheless, successive UK governments have acknowledged our moral responsibility that was why compensation was paid. As for the Americans, a State Department representative says the US government has no legal responsibility. And on the issue of moral responsibility, the representative says it is a term that's difficult to assess. Some of the Chagosians live in Crowley near London. Selmo Sher is one of them. He's in the UK for five years now, but he still pines for another country. Si dia retournera, même qui moi ici, plus fait mal passe mo comme du côté créole, mal passe mo derrière ces zulo, mo lil qui mo passe des fois Maurice, soit l'Angleterre. Others remember what their parents told them about life there. À dire travail pas si dia, oui. À dire je t'al, je te fais je te la tasse. Do you remember when you and your whole family have been deported to Mauritius? Mon ville Maurice enfant. Oui, parce qu'il me rappelle mon chien c'est être malade. Et depuis ça nous vivons. Et les dans une famille faire des morts pour aller. Elle va de Brésil tu peux vendre. After the expulsion, the Chagosians have been fighting back. In 2000, the British High Court ruled that the government had acted illegally. And in May this year, the Court of Appeal in London decided yet again in favour of the exiled Chagosians. In our days, other people can live and, and, and work on our place, whereas we, we are prohibited. Uh, I'll be demanding in Parliament that the British government proceed with this legal case against the Chagosians no further and instead pay for their right of return and for the restoration of the infrastructure on the islands to allow them to live there. However, the celebration did not last long. In June, the Foreign Office petitioned the House of Lords to grant permission to appeal. As another court case is underway, 
no one at the Foreign Office is authorized to make any statement on the issue. Even in Parliament, much cannot be said either. Two MPs raised the subject with the Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs Secretary on the 11th of June, and the reply was this. The government's policy in relation to the British Indian Ocean Territory remains a subject of possible ongoing legal proceedings, and it would be inappropriate to comment further. But some years ago, the British government said clearly why the Shagushans cannot go back. In 2002 precisely, a study concluded that the resettlement would be precarious and the cost of maintaining long-term habitation would be prohibitive. But not everyone agrees. They certainly can't go back to the Diego Garcia because that is a base for at least the foreseeable future. But some very limited uh, resettlement on the outer islands, which are 150 miles north of the base, uh, is feasible. And what about the American position over this resettlement plan? It seems that the Americans are opposed to it, yeah, although it is actually quite difficult to work out exactly what their position is uh, because they don't tend to, they don't tend to say it openly. Uh, but it does seem that the Americans are opposed to it, yes. But the fact is, this is a British territory. Uh, it's British law which governs there. Um, it may be an American base, but it's on British land. And if the UK courts say that these islanders have the right to go back, then they have the right to go back. And uh, this is East Point. Plantation. Some Chagosians believe the British government needs to give a more careful attention to their new compensation claim. I believe that the future for the Chagosian people is the UK and the government must make a decision. I think compensation uh, is uh, becoming vital for the islanders. Back in Hexham, 86-year-old John Loder is not giving up hope. He continues his fight for the Chagosians with the help of his son-in-law. In 1969, I was asked to go to Aldabra Atoll in the Indian Ocean to investigate the animals and plants there with a view to conservation because the British government wanted to build an air base. There was uproar because there were giant tortoises and rare birds. So they cancelled the air base on Aldabra and decided to move it to Diego Garcia. And when you think about it, they stopped annoying many thousands of giant tortoises, but decided to remove thousands of humans instead. It's important for the Chagossians to know, and the people of Mauritius, and the people of the world, that in a small market town in the north of England, such as Hexham, there are people who care for their needs. As I have long believed you are a Christian with a conscience, I call upon you. John Loder recently sent a letter to Prime Minister Gordon Brown. Unless our exiled people... And 10 Downing Street has replied, saying Mr Brown has made a careful note of the comments. After the long legal battle, perhaps the solution could be political. In the meantime, the Shagoshans continue to dream of going back one day. <laughs>